Dan Marillo continues. Welcome back, everybody. We have Berkeley Branham here with us from the Amarillo Zoo. And today we're meeting Thornton, the Colorado River Toad. <laughs> I do like his name. Me too. That's the name of a city. <laughs> and y'all get it. It's the name of a city in Colorado. Uh, so this is a, uh, well, first of all, thank you for being here this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, this is a big dude. It's like, yes. why? <laughs> like, yeah, so um, originally, um, honestly, I think this is actually a female. Um, a lot of times with toads and frogs, mm -hmm. the females are going to be a lot larger than uh -oh. the males. Um, Tell and, me something. Yeah, and so I was, uh, off camera I was telling y'all that I think this is a female because I haven't gotten him out to work with him in a while. <laughs> right. And, and yeah, he, he's a little big. <laughs> He's coming alive this morning now. Yeah, so. see, he's moving around. Yeah, so he just came back from a swim. That's why you have uh, a paper towel. But yes. also, what other activities do they enjoy besides swimming? Right. So um, frogs are really um, easygoing. They swim, they eat, they yeah. poop. That's, That's about pretty it. Much it. That's about it, yes. Uh, he does uh, enjoy uh, burrowing as well. Um, so these guys will create like a little burrow, mm -hmm. um, and that's where he'll sleep, um, and sometimes <laughs> You're being very wiggly. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, pretty much eat, sleep, and, and swim. And he, <laughs> and uh, she is one of the ones that you have uh, that you display with the kids or teach the kids about? Yes, yes, and so um, we do it just like this. As you can see, I'm wearing gloves. Um, that's really important when working with amphibians mm -hmm. um, because their skin is like a sponge. Mm. So it, our oils can actually be absorbed into them and make wow. them sick. So, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yes, yeah, so Didn't a lot of times we wear gloves, um, mm -hmm. even putting, uh, washing your hands and putting a coat of like water on your hands uh -huh. before holding them will also help protect them from wow. the oils. I, Learn something yeah. new every day, man. Yeah. Now you say they like to eat. So what, what are some things they like to eat, like insects, yes. stuff like that? Yeah, so uh, this guy right here particularly, he likes his crickets. Um, they in the wild they can eat anything from crickets, lizards to even um, small mice. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we have tried feeding him mice before, um, but he he just enjoys his crickets. <laughs> One filling them, huh? Okay. Um, now with where are they generally native? Do we have like these? like toads around here so or we have more frogs around here so we do have toads here but what we have here is most commonly known as the woodhouse toad okay um so those are going to be a lot of the um, ones that you hear at night are going to be those uh, woodhouse toads as well as bullfrogs oh okay. um those are commonly okay. found around here these guys are found more south um near mexico um and southern california oh, so, wow. so he definitely likes the panhandle weather then especially oh. during the summertime <laughs> yeah. yes yeah. yes so um ooh, oh. he's gonna take a trip there um so yeah he enjoys warm weather for sure he's trying to make a jump for it right. yes he's he to says it's here. cold it's time to go back to bed <laughs> All right, well, don't don't go anywhere everybody we'll be back with berkeley and thornton the colorado toad and we'll talk about some of the things that the emerald zoo has uh, coming up Everybody, we're here with Berkeley Branham and Thornton, the Colorado River Toad, and we're talking about some of the things that's going on at the uh, Amarillo Zoo. Uh, so I know one thing that we had talked about, I know that y'all weren't able to come out last week because mm -hmm. of the crazy, crazy cold. So kind of talk about the, your weather policy a little bit. Yeah, so um, with this, well, as she just said, warmer weather, <laughs> um, we may not have that big of an issue, but right. um, as the temps get colder, um, we will... Um, move some of our animals inside due to the cold weather. This mm -hmm. includes like the monkeys, the lemurs, and our reptiles. Okay. Um, so our tortoises have been moved to their inside holdings for the year. Mm -hmm. um, we do um, let them out if it is above, you know, 65, 66 okay. uh, is a high. Um, and then most of our animals, if it's really cold, will have access. Okay, perfect, perfect. And we got about a minute left. So uh, real quick, kind of tell us a little bit about um, uh, homeschool at the zoo. Yeah, so um, homeschool at the zoo is coming up here pretty quick. It is on January 18th from 10 to 11. Um, and this time we are looking at why animals are classified and why that's important. Okay. Um, you know, how they, and how they dis, um, classify them once they discover them. Um, admissions is $5 per child, um, and you can do that online on our website. Perfect, perfect. And then what child's uh, hours at the zoo? Yeah, so we're open from 9.30 to 5 every day. Oh, perfect. That's easy to remember. Yes, except <laughs> except for New Year's, obviously. We're going to be closed. Yeah, but, yeah, I'll be closed that day. But right. yes, yes, sir. But yeah, otherwise, we're open seven days a week from 930 to 5, weather permitted. 
Perfect. All right, Berkeley, thank you and Thornton so much. And for more information, well, this whole segment will be up on our website shortly after the show. Coming up, a new study says.